Hey guys, welcome to the Whimsical Workshop. It has been a minute, so let's get started. Yay! So, in today's video, I'm going to do, believe it or not, a block tutorial. It's been a little while. So, we did an unboxing for Dancing Blossoms a while ago. And we took this beautiful collection from QT Fabrics and turned it into our beautiful blooms pattern. So I'm going to go over how to do this funky pieced block here. And it wouldn't be a block tutorial if I didn't show you the actual quilt. It is huge, so I can't get the whole thing on camera. But we can get some of this. It is just a lovely lovely quilt and I have my beautiful blue chair back here it matches nicely it's gonna probably live here for a little while but let's take a quick look at the blocks real quick move this over move this over I know I should have been ready for you and we're gonna lay this here so you can kind of get an idea of how this is going together so these blocks are made from this beautiful panel and in the panel you get I think you get all of these I'm pretty sure yeah it's a yard panel and we're just gonna look at it by row I'm gonna scoot this over so you can see it get that out of there there we go and you can see this is a Dan Morris line he did this beautiful paintings of all of these flowers um, yeah, it is Dan Morris, but the way he did it, I want to show you this one is particular. The way he did it, and I don't know if the camera will pick this up, it almost looks like it glows. You know, it's the colors, the way he used his value, the way he used the painting. Um, it is just, it glows with the value. So this is the panel that comes with the collection. So we took the panel and we fussy cut each of these blocks out and we framed them. I say we, Matthew designed this quilt. Um, he framed them in plain white, which you see right here. And then we created this piece block and we used the really pretty floral as the frame over here to separate this from this. And then we brought this white into the block by using it on the diagonal. So we used the neutrals in a way to kind of play with your eye and let it travel through the block and into the quilt. But at the same time, we wanted to keep this fun and simple and easy to do. So we're gonna go through, um, this block is pretty straightforward. You fussy cut these, you cut your strips, and then we have you square up the block. We always do that with all of our panel blocks because sometimes these can come in a little askew. So we want to make sure that you have some uh, insurance. So we have you put the borders on and then trim it to size so it, we know it'll fit this block just very nicely. Um, but then I'm going to walk through how to do the pieced block because the pieced block is pretty simplistic. It's easy to do. It has a nice complex look. We did use all these floral co coordinates in the quilt but we still tried to keep it so they weren't super busy and they weren't competing with each other because they're just so lovely on their own. So let's get walking through how to do the piece block on our beautiful blooms pattern, which is available at the Whimsical Workshop. You can get the pattern as a paper pattern that we drop in the mail or you can get a download so you can have it instantly. Um, and that's at thewhimsicalworkshop.com. Let's talk about how we're gonna make this block. So you're gonna follow the cutting instructions in the pattern right there. Um, it'll tell you how to cut everything and we tell you how to cut the strips and then the pieces. So if you've not used one of our patterns, we try to make it as clear as possible for you so that you don't have to guess what direction to cut your fabric, or how many strips to cut your fabrics. We do do a full cut and then a pre-cut. So we're gonna set that aside for now. So to do the first part of the block, you're gonna have all these little, let me measure to make sure, do, 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 three inch squares, and then this should be a three and a half inch square if I remember, yep. So you have the white, 
and you have two florals. If you follow the pattern, we even tell you where to put each fabric, or you can just go crazy and make it super scrappy for yourself. The first thing you're gonna do is flip and sew on each corner. So you'll do one here and flip it open, and you will put one over here after this is done and pressed over here and open it. And then, so this is the first one done, then you put this guy on, and you'll press him open and you end up with this unit and you're going to need four various units for each block so now let me show you how i do flip and sew it's a little bit um, different than how you can do you can do it multiple ways but my favorite way to do it is i get a friction pen which i hopefully that one will write and i use a let's see if i can get this without the glare there you go. Creative Grids Folded Corner Clipper Ruler. Now this is the standard size. It goes up to five inches and that's perfect for this block. But they did come out with the extra large, which I also recommend getting. So if you have to do larger than five inch flip and sews, this is still going to work beautifully for that. We do have both these on our website. Just Everything's on the website. <laughs> we'll just say that. All right, so let's move this back over here. So how do we do flip and sew? Now most people would take a ruler, just a regular old ruler. Let me grab one. So you just take a standard ruler and how people do it is they just lay it point to point and they draw a line. Now what you're doing is you're only using this point and this point as your reference point. Now how I mark my pieces using the folded corner clipper is I align the ruler with the square and you're going to align this little straight edge here. You align the bottom of the square, the side of the square, the top of the square. And then the diagonal line that you normally would draw is already in the ruler. So what I do is I draw a line a quarter inch away from the center of the ruler. Whoops. So I know this line is going to go on my quarter inch foot. But we're still going to sew on the diagonal, but now I've used one, two, three, four, five points of reference to mark this line. So now you have a square that is a tr small triangle and a large triangle. So when we take it on our piece, we lay it on here so the small triangle points out. Small goes out. And then when I go to my sewing machine, I'm still sewing from point to point but my quarter inch foot just rides right along that line. So I'm gonna go sew this and come back and show you how accurate it is. So you can see here, there's my straight, my sewn line, and then there's my quarter inch line, there's my boo-boo, don't worry, this is an iron off pen, it'll go away. So now when I flip this open, oops, you'll see it matches. So by using this ruler to do this method, your flip and sews come out more accurate so that it looks even when you are, um, you have an even white line between here because this line isn't very wide. So if it's a little off, it's going to look a little funny. So that is the trick to this block. So once you've got one down, you can cut away. I like to cut away both layers of fabric back here because I don't like the excess bulk in my piece. And your quarter inch line you drew on is your guide as to where to cut it because it's a quarter inch away from the sewn seam. So there you go. So then I would go ahead and I would press this open. And then I would repeat on this side with this square and mark, the, again, mark the line, lining all the points. I like to start in the center and draw out to the corner, even though I just hold the whole thing. That is not supposed to happen. So you start in the center, in the center and go out, in the center and go out. It's less likely to stretch your fabric if you're gentle and not like a bull in the china shop like I just did. And you're going to lay this on here. Again, small triangle pointing out. You sew on that piece and then you flip it out and you end up with this. And you need a ton of these, a lot of these. So um, I have gone ahead and made the ones for the first block. And once you get them done, you go ahead and you sew the little white strips on each block and you sew the little white strips on the top and bottom. So you will end up with four of, four of these, not five, four of these to make a block. 
Um, and then we've got one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one, come back and we'll talk about how to put the block together. <clears throat> and before I forget, let's talk a little bit about pressing too. On this one, you're always gonna press out to the floral. And then when you put the frame on, you'll press out to the frame in both directions. Now, when we put these together, they need to make a diamond. So you've got one that goes that way. This one gets turned so that you have two seams going against a straight edge. Same thing here, two seams against a straight edge. And then finally, two seams against a straight edge. We do that to reduce the bulk of the block by only having two seams going against a straight line. It's also a way to gauge yourself when you're sewing to make sure you're not sewing something wrong. You should always have seams on one side and a straight piece of fabric on the other when you go to sew these together. Even when we go, some of them touch each other, this piece, if you look, if I just pick that up and put it over here, it would always give you a straight edge against two seams. So that is how you're gonna sew your block together. You're gonna go ahead and sew these two together and these two together. I would recommend just pressing in opposite directions. There's no reason to do an open seam here. There's not that much bulk. You're gonna sew these all together to make your beautiful block. And that is how you do the beautiful blooms coordinating block for our quilt. You, so you need to do your panel with the frames and then this cute little coordinating block and then you just sew them together following the quilt layout to make this absolutely beautiful throw quilt. It is a 60 by 80 quilt. It would fit on a small twin with very little drop, but it's actually a really great throw size for tall people, which I am not, <laughs> but I do have a very tall husband so it would work for him. So I hope you've enjoyed watching us do the quick block tutorial for our beautiful Blooms quilt featuring Dan Morris's stunning Dancing Blossoms group from QT Fabrics. This will be available in stores in the next couple weeks, if not already. So make sure you keep your eye out for it. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about these quick block tutorials. Would you like to see more of them? And make sure you check out your local quilt shop for this beautiful, beautiful floral collection. Thanks for watching.